Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning ceremony for the 2022 commencement ceremonies of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. I ask everyone to please remain standing for the national anthem. It will be sung by the School of Creative and Information Technology staff member, Lise Bulick. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er oh, the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Please be seated. Let's say I want to thank, say on everyone's behalf, thank you for that beautiful rendition of our national anthem and honoring our great nation. It's a great way to start our ceremony today. This is a proud day on campus. I got to take pictures with most of the graduates here before the ceremony, and they are excited about this, and they deserve to be excited about this major accomplishment in their life. Uh, I am thankful for all of you today for joining us as we recognize the achievements of the members of the 222nd graduating class from OSUIT. And before me, seated in their regalia, is a very accomplished group of graduates. We have uh, 117 students eligible for graduation this morning from OSUIT, and 75% of them are graduating with honors. Pretty cool. <laughs> What I'm told by the registrar's office, it keeps track of all these things that uh, in front of me here, 48 of our graduates are graduating cum laude. That's a grade point average between 3.0 and 3.49. 21 are actually graduating magna cum laude. That's a little bit higher grade point average or 3.5 to 3.79 and 19 are graduating summa cum laude, that's a grade point average of 3.8 or above. And the names of all of the honors graduates are designated in the commencement program, and they're each wearing a special medallion to signify their academic achievement uh, with their regalia. You will also recognize the members of our International Scholarship Society known as Phi Theta Kappa by the gold stoles that they're wearing across their shoulders of their regalia. Folks, such academic honors really did not come easily and they deserve our recognition, but I have the most profound respect for all of our graduates. I'd like to ask all of you to please give all of our graduates a nice round of applause. As a military-friendly institution, we also have great pride in honoring our veterans and recognize that several of our graduates are actually veterans and they're wearing red, white, and blue cords uh, to signify this. I want to do something special at this time. I'd like to ask all of the veterans who are in attendance, both the graduates as well as audience members, if you're a veteran, would you mind please do us an honor, stand so that we can recognize you and thank you for honoring our country and serving us. We always have lots of veterans at these events and no one could be more welcome on our campus. 
There are a few very special people that I would like to introduce at this time. First off, in the audience, I want to recognize that we have the president of the College of the Muscogee Nation, Dr. Monty Randall, right here joining us. Thank you. Dr. Randall is a good friend of the institution. I would also like to introduce the members of my senior administrative team, and I appreciate their dedication to OSUIT, and I acknowledge and recognize fully that I could not run this institution without their assistance. So please join me in recognizing each of them. First off, uh, Dr. Ina Agnew is our Vice President of Student Services. She'll be reading the names of the graduates as they come across. She's got the hardest job of all of us. Also on stage is Jim Smith. He's the Vice President of Fiscal Services. Our student speaker is going to be more formally introduced in just a moment, but I would like to ask Coriana Lawrence to please stand and be recognized at this time. Thank you, Cory. We're looking forward to your comments. We have four outstanding employees who have recently been recognized for their exemplary performance here at the institution, and it's my special honor to introduce them at this time, those that are in attendance. I'll read all of the names. But first off, the uh, Regents Distinguished Teaching Award winner for 2021-22 is in attendance today. I saw her earlier. College Preparatory Instructor Susie Malden. These others I'm going to read, I don't know if they're here or not, we'll, we'll find out here in just a moment. We also have this year's Outstanding Faculty Award winner, as selected by the OSUIT Faculty Staff Association, Electrical Instructor Heath Mosco. Is he here? Does an outstanding job for his students. Also the winner of the OSUIT Faculty Staff Association 2021 Outstanding Professional Staff uh, Award is our Director of Nursing on Campus, Jody Campbell. And finally, the winner of the OSUIT Faculty Staff Association 2021 Outstanding Classified Staff Award is one of our university uh, police officers, Thomas Johnson. And I know this is one of the days that Thomas is actively working outside the premises. Uh, let us uh, recognize each of these outstanding uh, faculty members and staff for all the service that they give OSUIT and our students. Let's thank all of them. Okay, it's, it's now my privilege to introduce our commencement speaker for the morning. His name is Jimmy Cagle. Mr. Cagle leads Oklahoma's automotive sector, serving as the state's automotive director for the Department of Commerce. After retiring from nearly 40 years of service with Goodyear Tire and Rubber as a communications manager, as an industry innovator, he has promoted growth and economic development in his community through the many leadership roles, positions, committees, and boards in which he has taken part. His diverse background includes education, staff planning, research, sports writing, community outreach, and public relations. Currently, uh, Cagle is the vice chair of the board of trustees of the Southwestern Medical Center in Lawton, Oklahoma, and was awarded the 2020 award, 2021 Lawton Fort Sill Economic Development Corporation Impact Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the microphone, Mr. Jimmy Cagle. Dr. Path, members of the president's cabinet, distinguished guests, deans, faculty, staff, students, family, and friends. I'm terribly honored to be here today, tremendously honored, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to fulfill this role for you. I also want to extend greetings from uh, my colleagues at the Department of Commerce. We are responsible for economic development, leading economic development activity in the state of Oklahoma, and they want to say to you as well, congratulations to all the students and, and um, appreciate everything you're doing here at OSUIT, and I'll talk about that more. In fact, I'll do it right now. <laughs> Uh, this is a special place. My wife came here from Tennessee 13, 14 years ago to work at the Goodyear plant in Lawton to be on the management team. Early on, I told my, my wife how special this place was, Oklahoma, okay, in terms of the friendliness, cooperation, the people here are just really special. And that became even more 
impressive to me when Dr. Path and Ina and others invited me to come here a few months ago, I went home and could not quit talking about OSUIT. I was extremely impressed. In fact, I was thinking coming up here today from Oklahoma City, I don't see Lindsay at the moment, but she and I worked together. Uh, we, we've just uh, recently published a new state recruiting uh, brochure for automotive. We're, I'll be taking it to several trade shows, national trade shows in the coming months. And we were about ready to go to press, and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've left something out. We've got to put OSUIT in there. <laughs> and we did, okay, very prominently. So I was, I'm just really, really honored to do this today. I'll be brief. There's an old adage that says, be on time, be summary to the point, and be seated. And I will do that, okay? But many of you today in the audience were probably expecting a celebrity or a high-ranking government official or a prominent academician to be your speaker, but what have you got? You've got a car guy, right? An automotive guy. But I know that a lot of you have some commonality with automotive, automotive because it's how you, we go to and from, we travel. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about that. But before I do, I wanna tell our students today that there really are two worlds that you're walking into as you leave OSUIT and graduate here today, okay? Two worlds in my opinion. One is a world that has a very fragile world economy and a very fragile geopolitical situation. I think we all know that from, from reading the media, watching the media reports. We have signs of a climate change that according to many scientists will reshape our future in many dramatic ways. A lingering epidemic that just won't seem to go away. Even after it's cost millions of lives around the world, an untold suffering and one that fragmented a global supply chain that we see in our world in, in the economy today, what we do, and that has been driving inflation to record highs. Closer to home here in the U.S., we are a nation with very different ideas on how to go about solving our problems. You are graduating into a world that is going through dramatic change, socially, politically, environmentally, economically, technologically, and just about every other ology. <laughs> hey, you know what? But at the same time, you're entering a world of opportunity where it never stops knocking, where the pace of change is so drastic that what you read about today is old news tomorrow, where company startups are occurring at an unforeseen pace as entrepreneurs initiate and follow through on ideas that will better our lives, where young people like yourselves have a wide choice of job opportunities, career opportunities. Job openings right now outpace job applicants by a ratio of two to one. That was not, that was not the trend for, for decades up until here just recently. Where dreams are made into realities. Virtual reality is commonly accepted. Non-astronauts, like you and I, if we have the money, <laughs> can hitch a ride to go out in space, right? Where packages are delivered to our doorsteps by drones. If not now, it's coming. Flying cars may eventually one day take us to and from home and work. Really, flying cars? And technology companies continue to expand our, our capabilities to gather, calculate, and interpret data to advance our way of life in ways that we can only imagine. Next Monday, I think it is set up for NASA to launch the new Artemis spacecraft. When I was a kid, I used to get up early in the mornings and watch the Mercury and the Gemini, okay, be take, uh, taken off into space. Next Monday is a big event for our country in that regard. It's gonna signal our return to the moon very shortly afterwards. And hopefully, and they're planning to, to, to use this rocket, this uh, spacecraft to take us to Mars in the years ahead. As a mix of these two, let me convey to you what's taking place in the automotive world, okay? And this is probably the best example of what's taking place in our world economy. It certainly was a factor in my deciding to leave retirement and come back to work and do the job I'm doing now. Right now, auto companies are pouring millions of dollars into investments to reshape the way we travel, getting away from gas combustion engines and more toward electric vehicles. Companies like Ford are hiring a lot of new talent and restructuring their company. Ford has set up its company now into two parts, EVs and non-EVs. Can you imagine something like that? General Motors and all the other automakers are committed to zero emissions within the next 20 years and are devoting a tremendous time and, and money and staff in this effort. 
And we are looking beyond that someday into hydrogen, a fuel source like hydrogen. Who would have thought? I was at a meeting just a few weeks ago at OSU's Ham Institute, okay, the Baker Hughes building off of 235. And I sat with a bunch of o OU professors. One of them told me, he said, Jimmy, you know, we looked at hydrogen and all these fuel source changes years ago, back in early 2000s. But you know what, this year, at right this point in time, it just feels differently, okay? What he's saying was, we're on the verge of doing some really innovative things in that regard, and it's coming. So welcome to a world where you truly can be what you want to be. And many of us have been where you are today. We face challenges like we're facing today. You'll get through our, our country, okay? You'll help our country <clears throat> address these challenges. I'm reminded of a comment made by an OG&E official a few weeks ago at the state capitol. We had a meeting about how we're going to transition to electric vehicles. And he said, we were talking about how is the electric system going to accommodate all the plug-ins? I know all of you have been asking those kinds of questions, right? How is this going to happen? And he said, you know what? He said, I don't have the answer for you, but we'll figure it out because we always have. And you know what? We will figure it out. I finished college and considered going to law school at a time when we were entering a recession and we were drawing down the military post-Vietnam. And I really appreciate Dr. Patty recognizing the veterans in our room today, it's great. But at that time, jobs were not plentiful. There was a lot of social unrest. Uh, as we saw, we've seen a lot of historical videos, President Nixon unlocked the doors for us to go into China. And then soon after that, we had to endure the Watergate fiasco. A lot of things were taking place. We were always shaking, we were shaking our heads, what's gonna happen next? But you know what, when Walter Cronkite got on TV, every afternoon at 5.30 to 6, we watched it every night. <clears throat> he gave the newscast and he said, and that's the way it is, and we all accepted that's the way it was, okay? We did not have pundits trying to interpret all that. We knew that's the way it was that was taking place that day. At the same time, in my life, <clears throat> we were about on the verge to get into a new arena, and you know it so well today, but at that time, we couldn't quite figure it out. I was in graduate school, and had a professor talking to us about this box, okay? And we really couldn't figure out what he was talking about, this box. That box became the internet, <laughs> okay? And look at what, how it has shaped our lives <clears throat> for the last 30, 40 years after that took place. It was, it was amazing. So as you celebrate today, know that we've been there, many of us. We have an appreciation for what you're personally experiencing. I say to you at this time, relax and enjoy the day. Enjoy the ceremony, okay? Enjoy what you have been through and don't forget the experience. I want to leave with you a few insights and challenges as I wrap up, okay? So bear with me as I go through this. I was, here's some things that I've learned along the way in my world of work and raising a family and doing the things I've enjoyed for the last 40 plus years. Find a few minutes every day to experience joy, true joy. Listen to birds sing, okay? Don't get so caught up in your career and what's going to take place next that you overlook these kinds of things. Walk barefoot in the grass and smell the flowers. Read a good book. Have a good conversation with a lifelong friend. Play with a child. <laughs> Watch a beautiful Oklahoma sunset. And I don't think anybody in the world can beat the sunsets we have here in Oklahoma. They're just dramatic. Appreciate the diversity in our culture. Find something each day to celebrate and find the joy in activities such as these. As a corollary, enjoy what you are doing. I hope you have embarked on a path that will give you a lot of joy over your lifelong career. Life is too short. I have been blessed immeasurably in being able to do what, I, what I've enjoyed throughout my career. I'll give you all kinds of stories. I won't do that right now, but, but I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed everything I've done throughout my career, and it's been a blessing. <clears throat> have a passion for what you are doing. If you're not passionate about what you are doing, you'll, you will not give it your best effort. I can remember being on a personnel committee years ago and we were interviewing a few people for this position and this one person walked in and I thought there's no way he's gonna get this job. During the interview process, the passion for that position and responsibilities just came across to me very, very strongly. And you know what? I voted with the committee to hire that person, okay? Because he had a passion for what that job entailed. He wanted to do it so badly, he had such an interest in it. At the same time, develop a compassion for helping others. Other people may not be as fortunate as you are, and we'd be, we'd be amiss if we did not help others along the way. It's up to us to make this world a better place. 
History is filled with stories of those who have given up fame and fortune to sidetrack, if you will, and help others along their path. The good book tells us, for to whom much, to whom much is given, much is required. If we don't help others in their time of need, in their time of need, how can we expect them to help us when we're down and out? Be dedicated. I did well academically, and uh, never claimed to be the smartest, but I, but I worked hard, and I was not the least smart either, okay? <laughs> but I felt like I was dedicated to my family and my faith, <clears throat> my friends, my ideals. And I had a place in the, in the speech here, and as I was preparing this, my, I was talking about dedication, and my wife said, don't go there. I said, what are you talking about? She said, don't get into your high school football days. They don't want to hear that. So I went ahead, as a good husband does, I put it in a speech, okay? And I read it to her as I was going, my, you know, getting ready for the day. And uh, she said, I told you to cut that out before we got through, so I'm not going to go there, okay? But some things take a long time to do to accomplish what you want to accomplish, okay? It took Tolkien 17 years to write The Lord of the Rings, his follow-up book to The Hobbit. Managers will tell you without hesitation that a dedicated employee has a better opportunity to advance within the company or, or organization. The victory belongs to those who invest their time, talents, efforts, maybe even their lives is something that is important to them. Here's a big one for me, never stop learning. As you leave the day, don't stop learning. My wife asks me all the time, why do you read that? I have a journal or a newspaper article or something on the computer. She says, I know you don't believe what they're saying. I said, well, I always tell her I'm doing it because I want to expose myself to other people's thinking and ideas. So as you advance, never stop learning, okay? Don't close off your mind from those who may have a different view of the world. Our world is changing. What you're going to see 20 years, 10 years, even five years from now is going to be dramatically different from what we have today. Know yourself, okay, and how you will approach your future, okay? We have learned from athletes' experiences here recently that they want to take care of themselves, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally, okay, spiritually. Think about that as you go forward in your life. Develop meaning and a purpose. You're going to make decisions that will impact your life, your choices, your behaviors, and your actions, and never compromise your integrity. My next point, be grateful. We're still living in the greatest country in the world, and you have a wide open door as you begin your career. Grateful people, I have found, are more positive, more productive, and for sure, more fun to be around. Be thankful for what you've experienced in this great institution, for your faculty and for your fellow students, and be especially thankful for your family and those significant others who have supported you along the way to this point in your, in your life and your career. And finally, dream. It's okay to dream. Be proud of what you have accomplished, but don't rest on your laurels. You have come this far. Continue to develop your abilities. We only move forward when we attempt new things. We don't score points if we don't shoot the basketball, right? We don't hit the baseball if we don't swing the bat. If you had told me years ago that this car guy who grew up in a working class family in East Jackson, Tennessee, would be the commencement speaker today at this great institution, I would have told you there's no way that would ever happen. And there's a corollary to that, I get close to finishing up here. Don't be afraid to take some risks. There's a video that I would like to share with you, uh, go back and look at sometime in the future, in the near future, because as you remember your graduation ceremony, don't get too far away, but Denzel Washington, one of my favorite actors, gave a commencement speech at the University of Pennsylvania about 10 years ago. In that he talked about how he failed and failed and failed and failed again. And then one time he hit it. Okay, he got the big part, made the big movie with a lot of Tom Hanks and some others in the movie. And of course, his career has been well established since then. But he talked about how, you know, that when he went to the first audition, they asked him to sing. Well, I've never seen a movie, I don't think, where Denzel's actually sung. So he had a hard time with that, right? So anyway, he got the part, went on and did really well. I remember when my wife and I were first married, and soon after that, we pulled out of my family's driveway to head to Knoxville, Tennessee, to go to graduate school. 44 years ago next month. It was emotional, okay? But I'll never forget it. Our lives together would never be the same. Denzel quotes his wife as saying this, to get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. 
That is so true. Don't be afraid to take the small steps needed to reach your goals in life. So, as we think about the importance of this occasion, find a few minutes each day to experience joy, enjoy and develop a passion for what you're doing. Along the way, don't be afraid to be compassionate in helping others less fortunate. Be dedicated to your life's profession and never stop learning. In the automotive world, as Ian and I were talking about a while ago, there's a lot of changes coming. Know yourself and your purpose in life. Be grateful for what you have and don't be afraid to dream and take risks. Congratulations on completing the degree requirements at this outstanding school. From this point on, celebrate the fact as you leave here today that you will forever represent OSUIT. This is a very impressive institution with a great program and tradition as I have found out. It's up to you to carry that forward. But know that as you do great things throughout your career, we will celebrate them with you. As our branding campaign says, be true to you at OSUIT, where graduation means you're hired. <laughs> I applaud you for reaching this stage in life. Best wishes in the future, and may God bless each of you. Thank you. Mr. Cagle, thank you so much for that uh, inspiring presentation. We're honored by your presence. We want to thank you for sharing your words of wisdom and your words of inspiration to our graduates who are making a transition today from one phase of your life to the next. And I know you all are going to represent OSUIT very well. Every graduation ceremony, we identify a student who uh, in many ways best represents the uh, student body. Uh, we try to identify a top student to be a student respondent, and this morning is no different. I'd like to introduce at this time Coriana Lawrence. Cori is from Los Angeles, California. Uh, she graduated, she's graduating from the School of Arts, Sciences, and Health with an Associate in Applied Science and Applied Health Sciences. She received scholarships through the National Society of Leadership and Success and serves her community as a volunteer with Pete's Pantry and the Deep Fork Community Action Council and the Salvation Army. As a student, she has completed two internships that were facilitated through her involvement with OSUIT's Empower program. Upon graduation, she will continue her education by applying for acceptance into the OSUIT nursing program and she wants to care for others throughout her career as a registered nurse. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome Corey to the podium. Good morning, administration, faculty, graduates, family, and friends. I want to start by congratulating all of you on your outstanding accomplishments today. It is truly an honor to be here with you and stand before you today. I will say that when I found out I would be speaking to you today, I felt like I was being punked. I contemplated what exactly to say and how my voice would be impactful to you. I decided that by telling my story, maybe I could encourage present and future students like myself. I am a single mother to three children who is an active client and participant with the Department of Human Services Temporary Assistance for Needy Families program and a student of the OSUIT Empower Special Projects program. <clears throat> I worked many jobs looking for a career to sustain my family. In January of 2020, I fell on hard times and sought assistance from DHS. My first visit to campus was to complete testing and certification for TANF. At that time, I was introduced to the Empower program through Katie Quillen and Ms. Fran Columbine. Information was shared about assistance for me and my family and how I could pursue an education that would pro provide sustaining employment. I agreed to come check out the program with the intention of staying only a few months to get back on my feet and get back to work. I originally wanted to do short-term trainings that would allow me to get out of the program quickly. 
when that path did not work, it was Katie, Miss Fran, and close family and friends who ensured me that I would be successful in whatever I chose to do and believed in me when I enrolled at OSUIT. I had a plan, and with the help of the Empower program, I knew I could be better for myself and for my children. I decided to pursue the field of nursing and knew that I wanted to complete my allied health degree first. Through the help of the Empower program, I'm completing this degree debt-free and ready to continue for the next phase of my education. Thank you. <laughs> being, being a single mother of three children, I didn't think that a college degree was even within reach. These programs have allowed me to not only get a college degree, but to care for my children. Starting classes at OSUIT, I was a ball of emotions. I remember my first in-person class was with Ms. Donna Glass. I had previously completed her online English class and was nervous to finally meet her. Due to the pandemic of all my classes, before this, they were online. I felt like a brand new student all over again. Looking back, I'm glad my first class was with her. Her nurturing nature ensured me that I was going to be okay. Her kindness was seen throughout all my instructors, each person encouraging and helping me to become a better developed student as I made my way through each semester. Many of us look back and wonder if our journey here at OSUIT has made an impact. I can tell you that each of our stories matter and have shown courage and determination. Each, is a, each of us had a choice to push for our dreams and, each, and we each took the torch and ran. Our instructors guided, helped, and even pushed us along the way to help mold us into the individuals we have become. OSUIT has shaped me into a better person with a true appreciation for education and growth. My mentors here have shown me that I can accomplish anything I set my mind to. I will forever be a part of the Cowboy family, and I owe that to my time here at OSUIT. I leave you with the quote from the same speech that Mr. Cagle <laughs> from Denzel Washington. It says, don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big, but remember dreams without goals are just dreams. Thank you all for listening to my story, and I wish you all the best as you leave here today and make tomorrow your own. Well, we're super proud of you, Coriana. That was a wonderful presentation and a true success, a success story. We want to wish you the best of luck in your nursing career in the future, but thank you for that. Uh, Corey reminded me of one thing when she, when she drew our applause by mentioning that she's graduating debt-free. Uh, U.S. News and World Report puts out a list of best colleges every year, and they consistently rank OSUIT as a school with the, in the western tier of the United States as a school with the students with the least amount of debt upon graduation. And uh, they've been recognizing us as long as they've been counting that number. And many of our students have been participating in paid internships, and you know, some of our graduates actually wind up with more money in their bank account the day they graduate than when they first showed up at OSUIT. It's an amazing, amazing process here. So, uh, uh, Corey, thank you for reminding us of that. At this time, I would like to ask all of the graduates to please stand, please rise. Candidates for graduation. Having completed the requirements prescribed by the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education, you have all been recommended by the faculty of this institution to receive degrees of Associate in Applied Science, Bachelor of Technology, and Associate in Science. By the authority vested in me by the OSU A&M Board of Regents, it is my distinct privilege as president of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology to confer upon each of you the degrees for which you have been recommended with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. We will now begin our 
presentation of diplomas. Graduates, please wait for the usher to escort you one row at a time to pick up your diploma cover and have your photos taken. Your first photo will be taken just off stage and then the announcer will, will read your name as you come to the center stage. We want you to stand on the spot marked with an X right down here in front of me. There you will have your second photograph made and then you can return to your seat. So all the graduates uh, in the first row, please remain standing. They're coming across now. All the rest of the graduates can be seated at this time until, you're, until the usher calls for you. Graduates of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology, we will now begin your graduation march. Everyone else, I want to uh, point out to you that during the presentation, anyone is welcome to take photos of the graduates as they come across stage, but I want you to know that a professional photographer is taking pictures of every one of the graduates, and all of the graduates will have an opportunity to purchase these pictures uh, from that agency. So let's lend our attention to the graduation march. Representing the School of Arts, Sciences, and Health, School Dean Dr. Trey Hill. Kyle Birkenfeld, Bachelor of Technology in Applied Technical Leadership. Where's your, where's your... Stephen Campbell, Bachelor of Technology in Applied Technical Leadership. <laughs> Wesley Driver, Bachelor of Technology in Applied Technical Leadership. Chloe Motley, Bachelor of Technology in Applied Technical Leadership. We now have our Associate in Science Allied Health Sciences students, beginning with Brittany Bradford. Cassandra K. Cantrell. Emerald Doran. <laughs> Eric Gates, who is also graduating with her Associate in Science Pre-Education as well as her Allied Health Sciences degree. <laughs> Kaylee Sue Harriman. Alyssa Jones. <laughs> Tegan Loggins. <laughs> Melissa Marshall. <laughs> Lindsay Mays. Coriana Marie Lawrence. <laughs> Lynetta McCaslin. <laughs> Outstanding graduate, Taylor Nixon. <laughs> Amanda Rice. Brooke Sides. Gracie Smith. Rihanna Stanton. Jasmine Stidman. And now presenting our Associate in Science Business Degree graduates, Katie Baker. <laughs> Kylie Bohannon. <laughs> P. 
Pamela Brown. Caitlin Danielle Jones. Outstanding graduate in business, Garrett McCabe Great Manning. Shaylin Montgomery. Ashley Mielheisen. <laughs> Tina Underhill Withrow. <laughs> we now introduce the Associate in Science Pre-Education students. Casey L. Farr. <laughs> Nicole Shanae Nic Hill. <laughs> Presenting our Associate in Science Pre-Professional Studies graduates, Brandy Nicole Holmes. Mackenzie May Pathkiller. Acacia Penn, outstanding graduate. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Emily Smith. Lacey Wesley Mattingly. <laughs> Presenting our Associate in Applied Science Culinary Arts graduates, J Jada Lorraine Batson. <laughs> Mason Colpitz. Vanessa Flores. Gabrielle Foos. Denavis Gis the second. Joseph Allen Graham. Sydney Nicole Gray. Natasha Hall. Felicity Star Lacey. <laughs> Cheyenne Miller. Isa Morrow. Robin and Janae Pascal. Carolyn Denise Portier. Emily Elizabeth Prescott. Pretty. 
Dadrian Richardson. Richard Alexander Serrano. Kaylin Sherrill. Corbin Smith. Grace Wilson. Representing the School of Creative and Information Technologies, Dean Christian Bradley. <laughs> Introducing graduates of the Bachelor of Technology, Information Technologies program, Cybersecurity and Digital Forensics, Bronco Harjo. <laughs> Dylan Hill. Jesse Lopez. <laughs> Julie Esther Oriana Mui. <laughs> Outstanding graduate, Joshua Palarone. Tucker Peterson. John Leroy Pruitt IV. Seth Michael Williams. Introducing graduates with their Associate in Applied Science and Information Technologies, Kenneth Ashworth III. Wow. And the final graduate, Dustin Bean McLovin. Sounds to me like some folks are excited in here. <laughs> Could I get all the graduates to please stand again? Okay, remember that enthusiasm. We're going to get there in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, as they move their tassels from right to left, I proudly present to you the 222nd graduating class of OSUIT. That's your cue. I'm going to call Lise Bulick uh, back to the microphone. She's going to lead us in singing the OSU alma mater hymn, and the words are inside the back cover of your program. Everyone stand. Everybody, please join me in singing our alma mater. Proud and immortal, bright shines your name. Oh,
Thank you, Lisey. This is truly a proud day on our campus, and again, I want to thank every one of you for being here to make this a special day to honor the accomplishments of these great graduates from OSUIT this morning. Our ceremony is now concluded. Please enjoy a safe trip home. We are adjourned. Thank you for being here.